In today's video, we're going to discuss how to determine U.S. residency. This video is the second part of a two-part series that will help you to prepare your taxes correctly and save you a lot of money by knowing what to include and what not to include. Hi, I'm Patrick Evans, founder of U.S. Tax Practice. I'm a U.S. certified public accountant based in Switzerland, servicing U.S. taxpayers here and in the rest of Europe and I'm in the business of helping fellow U.S. taxpayers. Today, we're discussing dual status aliens and how to treat a non-resident spouse as a resident and file jointly. Dual status aliens. A dual status alien is both a non-resident alien and a resident alien in the same year. That means your tax return becomes more complicated. Publication 519 explains how to figure the tax beginning on page 25. Here are the most common circumstances of being dual status. When you enter the U.S. and receive permanent residency status, receive a green card, during the year of arrival. When you enter the U.S. and pass a substantial te presence test in the year of arrival. When you enter the U.S. and do not pass the substantial pre presence test, but qualify for and make the first year choice election, which we'll discuss later. When you hold a JFM or Q visa the first part of the year and receive permanent residency status during the year. When you hold a J, F, M, or Q visa during part of the year, but later change to an H visa or other status eligible to use a substantial presence test and pass the test. When you leave the United States permanently during a year in which you qualify as a tax resident, but only if certain conditions apply. You might be a dual status alien if you permanently left the U.S. during the year. If you left the U.S. to reestablish your residence in your home country after you met the substantial presence test, your residency termina termination date is generally December 31st of the year you leave. You are therefore considered a U.S. resident for the entire calendar year. However, you can claim to be a dual status alien for the year you leave if you meet the following conditions. You are not a U.S. resident during any part of the following year and you establish that after you left the U.S. your tax home was a foreign country and you had a closer connection to that country. If you meet these conditions, you have the option to determine your residency termination date as the last day in the calendar year that you are physically present in the United States, which means that you will be a dual status alien for that year. When filing as a dual status alien, different rules apply for the part of the year you were a tax resident of the United States and the part of the year you were a non-resident. A dual status taxpayer cannot use the standard deduction and if married cannot file a joint return you must file Form 1040-NR or 1040-NR Easy and write dual status return across the top. Include Form 1040 with your return to show the income and deductions for the part of the year you are a resident. Write dual status statement across the top. For detailed instructions, see Chapter 6 of IRS Publication 519, U.S. Tax Guide for Aliens. Also, note that if you renounce your U.S. citizenship during the year, you will also be considered a dual status alien. Before leaving the United States, Aliens are generally required to obtain a Certificate of Compliance, also known as a Sailing Permit or Departure Permit, by filing Form 1040-C with a local IRS office. Visiting students and teachers are not required to get a Sailing Permit, however, as long as their employment income is authorized by the Immigration and Naturalization Service. Let's discuss the first year choice. If you arrive in the U.S. too late during the year to pass the Substantial Presence Test, or if you are an exempt individual during the first part of the year, then change visas later in the year, you are classified as a non-resident alien for the entire calendar year unless you make a special election. This generally means that you cannot claim your spouse or children as exemptions. However, there is a special election, it's IRS section 7701B4, to be treated, treated as, a not, as a resident alien from your date of arrival if you satisfy the following tests. You are not otherwise a resident alien for the year. You are not a resident alien at any time in the immediately preceding year. You are a resident alien under, under the Substantial Presence Test for the immediately following year. You are present in the United States during the election year for a period of 31 consecutive days. Your days of U.S. presence are 75% or more of the total days between the beginning of the earliest 31 consecutive day period and December 31st. If you make this election, you will be a dual status alien and you can claim an exemption for your spouse. Also to make the election, you must pass the Substantial Presence Test in the year following the election year which means you will need to file an automatic extension for your return so you can file after you pass the test. Let's discuss combining the first year choice with a joint return election. 
A further election is available when combined with the first year choice election to file a joint resident return with your spouse and be treated as a U.S. resident for the entire year. Under this election, you can claim the standard deduction and other tax benefits available to U.S. citizens and residents, but you are subject to tax on your worldwide income for the entire calendar year, so be careful and make the right choice. In order to eliminate double taxation, the foreign tax credit and possibly the foreign earned income exclusion are available to reduce or eliminate double taxation. If you or your spouse is a resident for tax purposes at the end of the year and the other spouse is a non-resident, you can elect to treat both you and your spouse as residents for the entire year. This rule applies even if the spouse who is a resident at the end of the year is a dual status alien, a non-resident at the beginning of the year. However, if you and your spouse make this election, you are both required to report your worldwide income for the entire year. Also, please note that this is an extremely important decision as it can only be revoked once in your lifetime, which is why we consider it a, a once in a lifetime election. How to make the choice. Attach a statement signed by both spouses to your joint return for the first tax year for which the choice applies. It should contain the following information. One, a declaration that one spouse was a non-resident alien and the other spouse is a U.S. citizen or resident alien on the last day of your tax year and that you choose to be treated as U.S. residents for the entire tax year. Two, the name, address, and identification number of each spouse. If one spouse died, include the name and address of the person making the choice for the deceased spouse. Okay, let's talk about ending the choice. Once made, the choice to be treated as a resident applies to all later years unless suspended or ended in one of the following ways. If the choice is ended for any of the reasons, neither spouse can make a choice in any later tax year. That's why it's a once in a lifetime decision. The first way is revocation by either spouse, death of either spouse, legal separation, or inadequate records. Remember, this is a once in a lifetime decision, so take it seriously. Consult the tax professional before making this decision. Find out what the benefits and what the consequences are of the decision. It can only be made once in your lifetime, and this isn't, even if you get remarried, it's only something that you can make once in a lifetime. So, very important decision. You can find more information on U.S. tax compliance and tax preparation on our website, www.ustaxpractice.com. But if you have a more specific question on U.S. tax compliance, get in touch. Just give me a call on country code 41 followed by 52-533-4581. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more U.S. tax updates and tips. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and LinkedIn. Also, we send out regular newsletters, so make sure to fill out our newsletter form. I'm Patrick Evans with U.S. Tax Practice. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.